How we doing, Crave? It's good to see you. My name's Kevin. I'm the high school pastor. I know we have a lot of guests here tonight. Everybody say, what up, guests? We're glad you're here. Uh, thanks for being here. It's our last Crave of the year. Yeah, it's sad. But the good news is, how many days left of school? Five. Some of you have half days, which is incredible for you. If you have to go to school for five full days this week, I'm so, so sorry. But after that, it's Christmas break. Yeah, okay, this guy, he's excited. After that, it's Christmas break. Yeah. If you have exciting plans for Christmas break, let's see some hands in the air. The rest of you are just going to be here. Cool. Working, sleeping, etc. So, uh, I'm excited about Christmas break. This is my last week in the office, and then I've got enough PTO to basically be off the rest of the year, except Brookwood has... Christmas Eve services at 2, 3.30, and 5. Hope to see you there on Christmas Eve. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. I've been listening to a lot of Christmas music. We've got presents that are being wrapped in our house. It's great. And uh, as I was listening to Christmas music this week, I was listening to what I consider to be Santa's theme song. Now, trigger warning for some of you who have very strong feelings about Santa, okay? I just want to go ahead and give you a heads up. This is a high school ministry, okay? If you're listening to this on YouTube, what up, YouTube? This would be a good time to pause, potentially move away from small children, okay? That's it. Now, that was your whole warning. I've been listening to Santa's theme song, and I have kind of a problem with Santa. It's not that he's not real, okay? There was your, there was your warning. I hope that didn't just shatter any of your worlds. Yes, yes. True story, many years ago, J.C. Thompson, I think, did shatter some small children's dreams here at Brookwood, but that's a story you can ask him about later. Um, but I'm listening to Santa's theme song. Do you guys know Santa's theme song? Santa Claus is coming to town? Come on, that's his theme song, man. Right? He's making a list. He's checking it twice. He's going to find out who's not in nice, right? But it's really that next verse. How does it go? Do you guys know it? No, not the chorus part. He sees you when you're sleeping. Creepy. Not the problem that I have, although it is super creepy. Super creepy. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so that whole line is a lie. You've never thought about it, have you? So be good for goodness sake is a lie. You're being good for presence sake. Like that's what's happening in this scenario. How many of you have ever around the holidays realized I need to get my act straight, it's, my presents are at stake? Anybody? Is this a safe place? Okay, for sure. For sure. You're sitting there at Thanksgiving, you're like, man, Christmas is a month out, I got to get right so I can get my presents. And that whole song is all about Santa's watching you, be good so you can get stuff, right? So my issue with Santa is not even so much that we focus too much on Santa instead of Jesus, although that is an issue. Here's an issue I have with Santa. I think that we begin to take some of these Santa characteristics and we superimpose them on Jesus. And we say, well, if I have to be good to get stuff from Santa, I have to be good to get blessings from Jesus. If I have to be good enough for stuff from Santa, I have to be good enough to get salvation from Jesus. And that couldn't be further from the truth. You've got your handouts, and right off the top, um, I'm realizing now that line got cut out. I want you to write this down in your notes. Put it up on the screen for you. God loves who you are as you are. God loves who you are as you are. That's your bottom line for today. I'm giving it to you right off the top. See, you don't have to measure up. You don't have to be good enough. You don't have to earn God's love. In fact, you can't. You can't be good enough. You can't do enough right to merit salvation. I mean, this picture we have at Christmas where it's kind of like, did you do more good than bad? Were you naughty or nice? Were you impish or admirable? For those of you who get that reference, yes. That's not how Jesus works. Jesus isn't sitting there going, well, the scale's tilted a little bit further towards bad this year. This person's off the salvation list. That's not how it works. God loves who you are as you are. And maybe that's all you needed to hear this holiday season, this Christmas break. God loves you exactly the way you are. If you've ever heard that you have to clean up your act or change or be better or more Christian for Jesus to love you, that's not true. God sees every part of your life. He knows you intimately, and he still loves you despite your flaws, despite your failures. You can't earn God's love by being smarter or more athletic or more popular or having more money. All those things have nothing to do with the love of God. 
God loves you as you are. I hope that you'll remember that this holiday season. But here's the thing about Jesus. While he does love you exactly the way that you are, he does want to change you and challenge you and transform you and grow you. We have a very fancy churchy word for that. It's called sanctification from over here on the right. Yeah, that process of becoming more like Jesus is called sanctification. And Jesus did come and he died for you and he rose from the dead so that you could experience life. But as a part of that, there's a transformation that takes place. I've got a verse here on your handouts, Romans 5, 8. You can look at that with me. It says, God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Love that verse. I want to show it to you in the message translation. We'll put that up on the screen for you. I realize now it's a little jacked up. Maybe we're going to edit that. I'm going to read it off the back because it's actually good in the back. This is the message. It says, Christ arrives right on time to make this happen. He didn't and doesn't wait for us to get ready. He presented himself for this sacrificial death when we were far too weak and rebellious to do anything to get ourselves ready. And even if we hadn't been so weak, we wouldn't have known what to do anyway. We can understand someone dying for a person worth dying for, and we can understand how someone good and noble could inspire us to selfless sacrifice. But God put his love on the line for us by offering his son in sacrificial death while we were still of no use whatsoever to him. I feel like this puts it a little more plainly. It's not because of how good you were. It's not because you're special. God loves you and chose to make that sacrifice on your behalf only because of the love that he has for you. What an incredible gift, the best gift that's ever been given, better than anything that's under your tree or will be between now and Christmas. And because he came and because he has a plan for your life, he wants to change you. He wants you to be more and more like him. And so tonight, just to close out Crave, to close out the year, I want to give you three questions, all right? And you've got some lines on your handout. We're going to run through these in just a minute. Um, And it's a chance for us to reflect and to look back, all right? How many of you normally make New Year's resolutions? Let's see some hands. Okay, how do those normally go for you? Two days, maybe two weeks, they don't last. But Christmas break is a good time to reflect on the previous year and make some plans for the next one. And before I actually give you the questions, I want to hit you with a couple of verses. Uh, If you have a Bible, turn with me to Psalm 139. Psalm 139. If you're not super familiar with the Bible, open it to pretty much the middle. There's a good chance you'll hit Psalms because there's 150 of them, just like the number of original Pokemon. I just realized that for the first time in my life. How exciting is that? Psalm 139, we're going to look at the last two verses of that chapter, verses 23 and 24. If you're somebody who likes to go back and and look at Scripture on your own, I would highly encourage you to highlight, underline, circle, star, whatever you do in your Bible or in your notes. Psalm 139, 23 and 24, I think are such good verses for us to look at as we close out a year. They say this, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. This is a serious prayer. To go to God and invite him to point out anything in you that's jacked up, that's wrong, that has made your heart far from him. When you pray that, I think God will answer it. So I wouldn't pray this unless you're serious about it. If you're ready to do some business with the Holy Spirit and say, God, show me where I need to make some changes, these are two great verses that I think will be super helpful for you. But if you're not serious about making change, I would caution you because when you start to pray prayers like this, I think God shows up and he changes things. Maybe you know what that's like. And so with those verses in mind of God searching us and testing us and pointing out things in us, I want to give you three questions to kind of close out your ear. They're a little bit a little bit verbose, and I'll give you plenty of time to write them down. The first question, we'll go ahead and put it up, is this. What is the single biggest time waster in your life, and what will you do about it this year? As you think back on 2019, what's the single biggest time waster in your life, and what will you do about it this year? I think we are professional time wasters. We're very good at it. And there are a lot of things that you can do to waste time. I'm only going to talk really about one And it's screen time. Man, ooh, ooh, screen time. Now, that can look a lot of different ways. Maybe you're a video game person, and you you realize often, oh, no, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. I've been sitting here playing this video game for hours and hours and hours. Video games can be a time suck. 
Maybe you keep your binge game strong. Anybody just want to admit, like, your binge game may be the strongest in this room? Okay, like, we're proud of that. We're like, yeah, man, I binged like eight episodes last night. I didn't do any homework. Yeah. Dumb. Uh, do your homework. Public service announcement. But we're so proud of how much TV we can binge. And some of you have plans for that over Christmas break. Like, oh, man, I can't wait to catch up on all the stuff on Disney+. Plus, Or I can't wait to sit down and catch up on, you know, all the cheesy Hallmark movies that all have the same plot. I, you know, I'm going to watch them all. All 57,000 of them. Maybe you binge a lot of TV. Maybe you do the social media scroll. You know what I'm talking about. So you start on Instagram, right? And you're like, I got to check everybody's story. I'm going to roll through those. Now I got to come over here to Snapchat. I got to see what everybody has sent me, keep my streaks up, right? Then I got to kind of check out everybody's story here. Now, if you were a boomer like me, I'm not really a boomer, but I'm just old. It, you would go to Facebook. Yes, that's still a thing, right? You'll do the Facebook scroll. What's going on? Great Aunt Mildred still doesn't know how to use Facebook. That's cool. Um, and then you'll go to Twitter. Does anybody use Twitter besides me? Okay, like five of us. That's awesome. Um, and then you'll do Twitter. And so this is what I do. When I get done with all that, well, i got to go back now, right? Like what if something new is on that first one I started on? And Yeah, exactly. And so you can waste hours on the social, uh, TikTok. Yeah, your boy doesn't, I don't, I've seen some of y'all's TikToks. That might be one of your biggest time wasters. They're not, they're not great. They're not great. <laughs> Just being real. Some of them are not great. Some of them are pretty good. But, but hear me out. Listen, none of y'all are about to be, do they have sponsored TikTok people? Is that a thing? Can you make money on TikTok? Okay. Most of you are not going to make it, okay? You're not going to be famous for TikTok. You're just not. And in, listen, shh, shh, shh. in 15 years, if somebody walks up to you, you're like, hey, TikTok, do you remember that? You're going to be like, TikTok goes the clock? What are you even talking about? Like, TikTok's just the new Vine. And guess what? Vine died, okay? R.I.P. Vine. Long live Vine. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to start a controversy tonight. Listen, listen, listen. My point is this. We all have things that we waste time doing. Take, hey, take 10 seconds. Take 10 seconds. Don't talk to a neighbor. Just think, what's my biggest time waster? Okay, it was not an answer out telling ourselves time, but for some of you, it is social media. Hey, for some of us, it's not screen time at all. It could be something completely different, but what's your biggest time waster, and what are you going to do about it in 2020? Because here's the thing, here's the thing. If you choose to do nothing, whoever answered that from the front, that's a horrible answer. I'm just going to be real. It's okay, but it's, it's a horrible answer because if you know you're wasting time, you should think about the amount of time you have. Hey, the richest person in the world, the poorest person in the world, they have the same amount of time in the day. And I think all of us are going to be accountable for how we use our time. Ephesians 5.16 says, redeem the time. Redeem the time. Another translation says, make the most of every opportunity. How are you going to use your time in 2020 that's going to matter, that's going to have anything of eternal consequence? Are you just going to continue to throw your time away? That's question one. Question two, what's the most important way you will, by God's grace, try to make this year different from last year? What's the most important way you will, by God's grace, try to make this year different from last year? Here's the thing. For some of us, we can think of 50 things right off the top of our head. I'm asking you to think about what's the most significant thing, the one thing that you could try to change that would alter the course of your next year. And right in the middle, this is very on purpose, right in the middle of this question, I would even circle this once you've got it written down, is by God's grace. Because this is why our resolutions fail. That's why somebody said, hey, they last about two days, because you try to do this on your own. You're like, man, this is the year. I'm going to change. I'm going to eat better. And then you drive by McDonald's, and it's just like a siren's call, right? You just you can't help yourself. I'm going to work out. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to wake up at 4.30, and it, it never happens. Like, you set that alarm, but then you're like, nah, delete. Because you try to do it on your own. This is the, I'm going to read through the Bible in a year. And by, like, day five, you're like, who are these people? This is... Not a very exciting story. I'm out. You try to do it on your own. But what are you going to do this year by God's grace with his help? What are you going to change this year that's going to alter the course of your life? I'll give you this verse from Psalm 105. It's, it's verse 4. I would jot this reference down. Let's put that up. Search for the Lord and for his strength. Continually seek him. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek him. Here's the thing. If you try to do this on your own, you'll fail. 
Jesus says in John 15 that apart from me, you can do nothing. So probably you know the big thing that you could change. Maybe it's related to that time waster. Hey, maybe it's a bad relationship that just needs to go. Maybe it's thinking about what actually matters. Whatever that is, seek God in this. It goes back to our Psalm 139 verses, right? God, search me, point out in me, help me. I challenge you to pray that across your Christmas break as you're thinking about 2019 and moving into 2020. Last question I have for you tonight is this. What single thing that you plan to do this year will matter most in five years? Ten in eternity. What single thing that you plan to do this year will matter the most in five years, in ten years, in eternity? Now, I already clowned on you for TikTok because the reality is it won't matter in ten years. It definitely won't matter in eternity. But, but stop and think. Not just, hey, what am I going to cut out, but what am I going to do? What am I going to do this year that will matter? We place so much emphasis on things that just don't matter. If I were to ask you to think about, who won the Super Bowl five years ago? It's the single biggest sporting event in the world. Who won it five years ago? Okay, some of y'all probably say Patriots because they win like every other one. Right. Who won it ten years ago? See, you don't, but here's my point. You don't know. None of you know. Now, I know who won ten years ago. You want to know why I know? Because the Colts lost to them. It was the Saints. But I cried. It was a horrible day. It was bad. That part wasn't a joke. I don't know why we're laughing. Um, but here's my point. You don't know. It's the single biggest sporting event in the world. You don't know who won 10 years ago because it doesn't matter. Let me give you a little bit, of, little bit of perspective. Okay, I'm 33. Okay, when you're done with school like I am and you have been for a long time, I never wake up at night and sweat my GPA. That is not a license to say, don't worry about your school, don't worry about homework, tests, et cetera. I'm just telling you, there are some things that we elevate so high, and we honestly, we make gods out of them. We worship at the altar of the college scholarship or the GPA or the athletic team. They're just not going to matter in five or ten years. It matters, but it doesn't matter. Does that make sense? Are you tracking with me? What are you going to do this year that's going to matter in eternity? What can you do this year that Jesus would bless and that would be fruitful and that could make a difference in someone's life after this world is over? See, if you can't think of anything that you've done this past year that's going to make a difference in eternity, I would challenge you to think about your walk with Jesus. Most of us are just comfortable, and we just kind of go with the flow. We do our own thing, and we're like, you know what? I'm just trying to get through high school. I'm just trying to get to college. I'm just trying to get that good job. I'm just trying to get that house. I'm just trying to get that white picket fence, that husband, that wife, those 2.5 kids, the dog. The American dream isn't it, man. Hey, yes, two and a half kids, it's a, it's a joke. This part's not a joke. There's more than the American dream. There's what Jesus has for you. And if you don't get that, you're going to wind up spinning your wheels on things that just don't matter. So what's the single thing that you're going to do this year that's going to matter in eternity? I challenge you to think about that. I challenge you to think about that. Check out these last verses, Colossians 3, 1 through 3. It says, since you've been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. See, some of us are so caught up with all the studying we got to do this week for exams. That's not a bad thing. Some of us are so busy trying to shake those gifts under the tree to figure out what it is. It's not wrong to get presents. Some of us are so worried about our sports team in the college football playoff. It's not bad to cheer for your team. I'm just telling you, those aren't the things of heaven. Those aren't eternal things. I challenge you to think about and to pray and ask God to show you what can you make a difference with in eternity that will matter long term. We'll put those three questions back up for you on one slide. If you want to take a picture of those, whatever you want to do, we'll leave them up for a second. I think that's worthwhile for you to to think about. As you go into your Christmas break, as you're thinking about uh, the end of the year, the beginning of a new one, what really matters, how can I glorify God as I do all these things, I hope that you'll reflect on these questions. I hope your Christmas break will be fruitful and profitable for you. Now, you guys see the band getting ready to come back up. We're going to sing one last song. Um, And in that song, I just want to invite you, man, if, if you feel like 
you just want to sing, sing. It's a beautiful song. They're going to do a great job. I know they are. But maybe this is a time where you need to pray. Maybe this is a time where you need to ask God to show you some of these things. Maybe as you reflect on some of these questions, you feel convicted by the Holy Spirit to go, man, I, I'm just so caught up in things that don't matter. God, I, I, would you show me what I can do that's going to make a difference five years from now, ten years from now, in eternity? God, would you show me the changes I need to make? And Holy Spirit, would you help me have the conviction and the courage to make those changes? So I invite you, set your stuff down, get comfortable. You can put your Bibles, your notes away. I'm going to pray for us. The band's going to sing. And like I said, if you want to sing, sing. If you want to just sit there and pray, this is a great time for that to reflect, okay? Let me pray, then we'll move on. God, uh, thank you that you invite us into a relationship with you. Jesus, thank you for coming and being born into this world, living a perfect, sinless life, and dying on the cross that we might experience freedom. And Jesus, the story doesn't end there. You got up out of that grave three days later. And victory is yours. And Jesus, you tell us victory can be ours. But it's not about how good we are. It's not about, uh, God, how worthwhile we can live, God, to be worthy. It's because you love us that we can have true life. And so I pray that you would be speaking to us, Holy Spirit. I pray that in this time of reflection, God, you'd be moving Show us how we can make an impact in our world that will matter for you in eternity. We love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.